Hey Run Junkies, today we are here at Roadrunner Sports because I need a new pair of running shoes. I thought I'd bring you guys along because I want to show you the process by which you want to be picking out your running shoes. You don't want to go to your Facebook group and ask them what their favorite pair is. You don't want to ask your run club or your best running friend because your biomechanics are very different from everybody else's. Come into a running store that has associates that are specializing in fitting you. That's what we're gonna do today. So our goal, Heather, is to, get you, is to get you in the right category of shoe, and then you pick the shoe that feels best for your foot. Yeah. So, right, so in the first step of this process, I met with John to determine some basics about my running style. Questions include, what surfaces am I running on, average miles accumulated per week, and upcoming races. Mileage per week approximately. Um, right now, let's do 11 to 20. Any events? Just be nice. Marathon. Oh, wow. Nice. Very good. Um, which one is it? Uh, the Dopey Challenge. Oh, oh man. <laughs> man. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good one. He also asked me about any pain or discomfort I feel while running. The next step was determining my weight distribution and foot structure by standing on this pressure pack. When to step off. The main thing we're looking at is arch height. So okay. you can see yours. We get examples here of medium, yeah. low, and high. So definitely on the high. high. Side. <laughs> yep. yeah. So you can see that there's tendencies with each arch height. So we're going to see whether you fit the tendency or okay. go against the tendency in motion just a moment. Before okay. we get another treadmill, this is going to show you what it looks like in 3D forefoot versus heel pressure. <gasps> cool. <gasps> so lower pressure in your heels than in your forefoot. This is yeah. the zone of your foot that's not used to hold up the weight of your body. So what we like to do is mold insoles that fill in that zone, kind of balances you out in the issue where it takes away the peak points, which can create pain. It's going to be more custom molded to, yeah, to your foot. So you can feel that. It's just a little firmer, and it lasts longer than the shoes. Following that, John put me in a lightweight, neutral shoe so he could take video of my stride, assessing any pronation or flexibility issues I might have. So we'll do a 10 second recording of your feet. I'll be recording your feet. Okay. And I'll let you know when to hit stop. What John is trying to determine from this video is whether or not there is a straight line from my knee down to the bottom of my foot, and that the bottom of the shoe is perpendicular to that line. And the shoe, so it's nice and 90 degrees in the air. You want to see if that stays 90 degrees or if it falls in as you become weight bearing. So I'm watching as it comes down. Boom, we've got a little bit of flexibility underneath that ankle, so just leaning in just a hair. So left foot straight, right foot straight as well. You can big toe a little toe, you can see that the, on each side of the heel there, but it's also falling in. So for as high of an arch as you have, typically the higher the arch, the more rigid the foot, the lower the arch, the more flexibility or pronation we'll see. So you have a high arch. But you go against the tendency and you actually have flexibility in your foot. My son's the same way. So He's calling um, me weird. <laughs> so then we do the two steps. So when we just take a conclusion from a scan, we want to make sure we see what happens in motion. So we do the opposite in a shoe of what the foot does. So kind of counterbalancing. So the foot has flexibility, we want to counterbalance with stability. The feet are nice and stable, 90 degrees naturally. That's when we want flexibility in the shoe. If you can push it in with your thumb on the inside wall of the shoe, that's a neutral or flexible okay. shoe. Because if I can push in with my thumb, it's not holding the weight it's of anybody's body. So on you the shoe you have on, that's a flexible shoe. You can physically push oh, yeah. it with your thumb. Okay. So you guys, and you saw it visually, it didn't hold you on. So what makes it a stability shoe is called a medial post. It's hard on that inside wall. You cannot push that in with your thumb. The purpose of that piece is to hold up that collapsing part of your foot, bring you to a 90 degree angle, take stress off your shins, your knees, your hips, all the way up. Then it's a question of how much stability. So there's a spectrum within each category flexible versus stiff, this is mild versus high. So that has to do with how, how large that medial post is. The smaller the medial post, the milder the stability. The higher the, the, the larger the medial post, the higher the stability. You have been in a high. Evaluating all of that information, John determined that although I have high arches, I have a tendency to pronate, which means my ankles flex inward. His recommendation was for me to move away from my high stability shoe into something more flexible. I needed the stability, but I was overdoing it with the shoe I currently wear. One of the things John did for me was to mold custom insoles. The point of the insole is to provide arch support and flexibility in all of the appropriate places. Pull it on the left foot. John's recommendations are based on the data he gathered from me and my biomechanics. Going into a run specialty store is a great way to do this. Absolutely. My pleasure.
Yeah. Compression heels. Yeah. So high arch but that flexibility, so that's gonna feel awesome this year. Coming up in part two of my visit to Roadrunner Sports, John sends me to Darren, who helps me find the right shoes for me. Subscribe to this channel and come back soon for more great information about buying your new shoes.